this video, we are going to see how to apply source transformation and get an answer. Right? So let's take a numerical. So in a problem, it is 3 ampere, 6 ohm, 3 ohm, this is 2 ohm and this battery is of 10 volt. The objective is find out this current I. So we have to find out the current I using source transformation. Now, two things I would like to make you clear. Thing, first thing, repeat. Two things I would like to explain. First thing, they ask this current I, which is nothing but current flowing through the 3 ohm. So in our circuit, this part should not be touched while analyzing. So I'll name here A and B. So whether its value or its orientation should not be changed at all. So I cannot touch this 3 ohm. Next, whenever the sources are given, you have to check what is the use of transforming a voltage into current or current into volts. It should not happen that whatever sources are given, you should transform all the time, not required. So thing is that what I will do, I will not change or I will not transform this current source. I will just transform this voltage source. I will tell you why. So if I transform this voltage source into equivalent current source, see what will happen. So first I will write converting 10 volt voltage source into equivalent current source. So the current value will be given as simply voltage divided by resistance. So it is 5 ampere. So I'll redraw the circuit. So 10 volt coming in series with 2 ohm earlier, whenever I transform that into equivalent current source, 2 ohm will come in parallel with the current source. This is untouched. 2 ohm coming in parallel and 10 divided by 2 is a 5 ampere current source I will get. Remember, I am not touching this part because I want this current I. Now, the advantage of converting voltage source into current source is that this 3 ampere and this 5 ampere coming in parallel and contributing currents in same direction. At the same time, this 6 ohm and this 2 ohm coming in parallel so that circuit can be reduced. So 3 ampere and 5 ampere are in parallel. So we have seen that whenever two current sources are in parallel, either you will get addition of current or a subtraction of current depends upon their individual directions. So both the current sources are having same current directions. So I can say resultant current will be 3 plus 5 which is 8 ampere and 6 ohm 2 ohm in parallel. So 6 parallel 2, I will get an answer 6 into 2 divided by 6 plus 2. So I will get an answer 1.5 ohm. Now see how the circuit will be simplified. This current source will have the value 8 ampere. This equivalent resistance will have the value 1.5 ohm. And 3 ohm 
that I have not touched because I want to find out this current I. Now here you have a choice. Either you can use a current divider rule and get an answer or further you can simplify and make one voltage source so that ultimately in a circuit I should have only one source and one resistor. So I will do that. I will convert 8 ampere current source into equivalent voltage source. Voltage value will be simply multiplication of 8 and 1.5. That will give me a value 12 volt and this 1.5 will come in series with this 12. So the circuit will be like this. I will have a voltage source and 1.5 in series with it. So 12 volt, 1.5 will come in series with 12 volt, 3 ohm is my load resistor meaning I am supposed to find out current flowing through it. So now I can use a simple ohms law and I can say the current I is total voltage 12 divided by total resistance in the circuit 1.5 plus 3. So it is 12 upon 4.5 and the answer I will get 2.6667 ampere. So here we have seen that whenever you are transforming current to voltage or voltage to current ultimately we should have a simple circuit like this where you can use a Ohm's law and get an answer. In the subsequent videos, we will see more numericals based on this. Thank you.